Our second scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. If you'd like to follow along, it's on page 702 in your pew Bibles. Hear now these words of Jesus. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. As I mentioned to you before, this is one of my favorite times of the year. After we have all been stuffed with turkey and dressing and pumpkin pie and we've shopped until we've dropped in the stores, it's time to break out the Christmas decorations and, and we really get into the holiday spirit. And because of the holiday cheer, I just want to make you aware, if you see a white Buick on the road and the driver of that white Buick jamming out to some Christmas music, such as Last Christmas by Wham or All I Want for Christmas is You by Mariah Carey, I don't want you to be alarmed because more than likely it's just me. But here in the church, this Sunday begins the season we call Advent. And Advent is the season of preparation for Christmas. The word Advent comes from the Latin term meaning coming. And the season of Advent has a a kind of a a double meaning. First and probably the most well-known of the two reasons, we we remember and celebrate the birth of Jesus almost 2,000 years ago. But while we celebrate the birth of Jesus, Advent is also the time where we prepare and anticipate for his return. And often the first Sunday of Advent is dedicated to this topic of Jesus' coming again. And in our text from Matthew, we read Jesus encouraging his disciples to keep watch, to be prepared, because he says the day of the Lord's return draws near. In the context of our text from Matthew, Jesus is with his disciples, and and this is before his arrest, crucifixion, and death. And he's making sure, as best as he can, that his disciples are prepared for his return. And in this context, he is teaching a couple of parables to make his points. But today we're going to focus on the parable of the ten virgins, or the ten, bride, uh, the ten bridesmaids. And so Jesus opens this parable famili- uh, with familiar words to what he often opens his parables with. The kingdom of heaven will be like. In this parable, Jesus likens the kingdom of, he- of heaven to a wedding banquet, which is often a, a common analogy used in Scripture. And this type of wedding would have been a a great analogy that the first century Jewish audience would have easily understood and recognized. Wedding festivities in the first century Jewish culture typically lasted seven days. And what Jesus is talking about here is the beginning of that joyous celebration. And that celebration began with the procession of the bride and the groom. And 
often the groom would start out at his family's home and travel to the bride's house. And then the groom would escort his bride back to his house or his family's house to kick off all the festivities. But Jesus in this parable isn't focusing on the bride and the groom, but instead on the bridesmaids. Kind of an interesting twist. And and the, the second twist is that there are five wise bridesmaids and five foolish bridesmaids. In the story, the bridesmaids are waiting for the groom to arrive so that they may greet him and then process with him and his bride back to the banquet. This seems to be happening at night because it's dark and they have lamps so that they can light their way. This being in the dark wasn't necessarily uncommon, but it's, it is a little strange. But in any case, the bridegroom is delayed. And a groom's delay wasn't necessarily uncommon either. Maybe a, a thought would be that the groom and the bride's family had to uh, re-enter negotiations on some of the gifts that were to be exchanged or something along those lines. But Jesus doesn't really bother with giving an explanation for the delay because really it's none of the bridesmaids' business. It's none of their concern. The point is, is that he's delayed for some reason. And they should have anticipated that the, the, uh, the groom would be delayed, that that might occur. And the delay is long enough that all the bridesmaids eventually fall asleep. I mean, I'm getting to that point that by midnight, yeah, I'm fast asleep too. But at midnight, it is announced that the bridegroom has arrived. And this is where the foolish and wise part comes in. Five of the bridesmaids realize that their their lamps are going out and they have run out of oil. And so they ask the other five bridesmaids who did bring a, a replenishment of oil for some of theirs. But the five wise maids tell the five foolish ones, no, there's not enough between the two of us. Go buy some oil for yourselves. Now today, to us today, the the wise bridesmaid's suggestion to go find a dealer to buy oil in the middle of the night sounds a little ridiculous. I mean, where are you going to find a store. Well, maybe not so much ridiculous anymore. I'm sure there, there wasn't, but there wasn't a Walmart or uh, a Walgreens open in that, ty- in that time. But that's not really the point of the story because somehow in Jesus' story, the, the maids do eventually buy some oil, find it somewhere. Maybe there was a Walmart, I don't know. But while they were away, the bridegroom arrives And the wedding party, minus the five foolish maids, process to the banquet. Eventually, the foolish ones return, but they are denied entrance to the banquet by the groom. Although these bridesmaids were chosen to accompany the bride and the groom, their role as bridesmaids did not guarantee them a spot at the banquet. Yes, they were initially a part of the wedding party, and they had waited with lit lamps, at least for a little while, but they did not plan for the long, dark time of waiting. And Jesus summarizes his parable in verse 13, where he says, keep awake, or or, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. And this is what we as Christians are always to be aware of. We are to be awake. We are to be alert. We are to be prepared. A couple weeks back in our our series based on the Apostles' Creed, when we, we focused on the return of Christ, I talked about how we should live as if Christ is coming back tomorrow. But we should also live as if he won't be coming back for another hundred years. And that's what Jesus is trying to make the point of. What makes me feel a little bit better is that the early Christians didn't get it either. 
they still struggle with this because the apostle Paul had to explain this in his first letter to the church of Thessalonica. Because Paul wrote in his first letter that the Lord's return was near and that the Christians in Thessalonica should live with that in mind. But apparently some of them had the grand idea that because the Lord's return was so near, that they could quit their jobs and they could sit at home fasting and praying and watching the sky for Jesus' return. And when Paul heard about this, he wrote to them in his second letter that yes, although Jesus' return is near and they need to live in light of that, they must also live as if, as if his return is still far off. And Paul was right. Jesus still hasn't returned yet. And I think that is the mentality we must maintain, not only in the Advent season, but throughout the church calendar. We as the church should not get caught trying to determine the, the day or the hour or fall asleep and, and let our light burn out. To live in preparation for Christ's second coming means that we are to continue the tasks that we have been told to do in preparation for the master's coming. And that's actually what Jesus talks about in the next parable when he talks about the parable of the talents. While we wait, while we wait and hope and anticipation for his arrival, we are to be productive and those tasks include bearing witness to God's kingdom. And he talks about at the, at that at the end of this section when he talks about welcoming the stranger, feeding the hungry, visiting the sick and imprisoned, and then at the end of the gospel to make disciples in all the world. Maybe another way to put it, it's like me at Christmas time when I was younger. I knew that right after Thanksgiving morning or Thanksgiving day, that Christmas morning was only a few weeks away. And of course, I had made my list of things that I wanted to see under the tree on Christmas morning. So for the next few weeks before Christmas, I became the best son a mother could ask for. I made my bed every morning. I helped clean the dishes. Maybe not the best, but I did them. I vacuumed the carpets. I did my homework on time. I didn't get in fights with my brother. At least I didn't start it. He may have, but that's not the story. I was on my best behavior, and I did what I should have been doing the whole year round because my hope was that all my hard work, all this work that I was doing would be rewarded and fulfilled on Christmas morning. And every year, it usually was. This is our reminder, every Advent season, we are reminded to live in anticipation. We are reminded to be prepared at all times and not get caught sleeping. As we remember and we celebrate the first coming of God through Jesus Christ, we are told to stand watch, be awake, be alert. May we be prepared for when Christ comes again, whether it be tomorrow or whether it be a hundred years from now. And while we do so, may we always look to Jesus and serve him and others, waiting in great hope and, and anticipation. Amen.